Hi everyone. We're now going to talk about drug agonists, comparing what we call full agonists to partial agonists. Now this topic moves us into the realm of pharmacodynamics. Well, what is pharmacodynamics? It's the study of the biochemical and physiologic effects of drugs and their mechanism of action on the body or on microorganisms and other parasites within or on the body. It considers both drug binding, which refers to the initial consequence of a drug receptor interaction or target interaction, and drug effect, which refers to the subsequent cellular actions. Now, not all drugs exert their pharmacological actions via receptor-mediated mechanisms. However, many do, and we're going to focus on those that act via receptors connected to signal transduction mechanisms. In this series, we'll start by focusing in this video on drugs that drive a signaling pathway forward. We'll call them full and partial agonists. In subsequent videos, we'll move to drugs that tend to act on receptors to diminish certain signaling pathways, that is, the antagonists or the agonist antagonist, and inverse agonist. Finally, we'll provide clinical examples of why it's important to understand the intracellular mechanisms associated with transmitting the drug signal to the biochemistry responsible for transducing the drug action. The key thing to understand is that these transduction mechanisms result in a drug response or effect that is non-linearly related to drug concentration. Now, as an overview, signal transduction is usually accomplished with one or more of the following key cellular processes, each of which results in allowing a signal or drug to move its effect from the outside the cell to the intracellular compartment. Transmembrane receptors are classified as either ionotropic, that means linked to ion channels, or metabotropic, linked to biochemical processes, like the production of cyclic AMP by adenylate cyclase, or to cascades of intracellular phosphorylation or dephosphorylation associated with kinases. There are also intracellular receptors that include cytosolic and particularly nuclear receptors, which we show here. In a later video, we'll address how the connection between receptor binding and effect is made within the cell and then focus on why a clinician needs to be aware of this detail in order to understand how the body responds to exogenously administered drugs. Now let's first talk about the binding of drugs with their receptors. It's important to recognize that the majority of drugs interact with receptors in a reversible equilibrium, meaning that there is non-covalent binding to the receptor. Due to this reversibility, the plasma concentration drives the drug binding to the receptor until the maximal binding is achieved, what we call Bmax, often but not always when all receptors are occupied. The term that most intuitively describes the interaction of a drug with a receptor is the dissociation equilibrium constant, or KD, because it defines the middle of the operating range of concentration for the drug-receptor interaction, meaning that it's the concentration when about 50% of the receptors are occupied. In general, you find a drug will show its full range of effect within about a 100-fold concentration range. So with the example shown, the drug's threshold activity will be seen at about the concentration of 1, and the max will be at about 100, with about 50% of maximum achieved at a concentration at about 10. Now, when you compare the equations for this sigmoidal curve, which is defining drug binding, and then compare it to the equations that define drug effect, you can see that there's this, the equations are very similar. That is, Maximal binding and Bmax are now replaced by maximal effect, or Emax, and the dissociation equilibrium constant, Kd, is replaced by the effect of concentration 50, or EC50. So, that brings us to another sigmoidal plot, which is the log concentration, or log dose, versus effect curve, which we discussed before in the context of justifying the value of measuring drug concentrations during therapeutic drug monitoring. And we show that curve again here. So with that background and review, let's now talk about different types of drugs interacting with receptors. We'll now discuss agonists that lead to a biological effect often associated with a therapeutic effect. 
Now, compounds interacting with receptors are divided into distinct pharmacological types based upon their intrinsic efficacy on a receptor signal transduction system. A full agonist is a compound that achieves the largest biological effect at its maximally effective concentration. And a partial agonist is a compound for which the Emax, and therefore the intrinsic efficacy, is less than that of a full agonist. In this log concentration response curve, the solid line traces the effect of a full agonist. Because the same maximal response is achieved, the drug represented by the dashed line is also a full agonist, but it has a lower potency, presumably due to reduced receptor binding affinity. The dotted line shows the curve for a partial agonist. Notice that it has a lower Emax than the other two drugs. Also, the UC50 of this curve shows that this partial agonist has a similar affinity or potency than the first full agonist, but a higher affinity or potency than the dashed full agonist. So if you look carefully, you can see that the dotted line of a partial agonist can have a greater effect than a similar concentration of a less potent full agonist as shown by the dashed line. A classical example of a partial agonist is buprenorphine a mu opioid partial agonist. Its activity is compared with morphine, a pure mu agonist. However, buprenorphine is about 30 times more potent than morphine because it binds to the receptor with higher affinity. The clinical benefit of a partial agonist would be associated with the safety or the ceiling of its effect, in other words, the Emax, because it's lower than that normally causing the adverse effects of respiratory depression with opioid drugs. Now let's examine how two compounds could bind to the same receptor connected to the same signal transduction system and lead to different maximal effects, that is, have different intrinsic efficacies. The simplest way to explain this is through what we call receptor theory, where the receptors can be in two states, the resting state, or R, and the activated state, or R star and that these states are in equilibrium with each other, but can be impacted by the type of drug that binds to them. Let's just first look at the situation where there's no drug ligand. In this scenario, there's no effect unless the non-bound receptor is associated with a basal or constitutive activity, a situation we'll discuss later when we talk about inverse agonists. When a full agonist interacts with a receptor, it shifts the equilibrium toward the activated receptor form, it has a preferential affinity for the activated form relative to the resting form. The greater the conformational selectivity for R starred, the greater the efficacy. A useful analogy is to compare drug's effect to that of a bicycle driven by a pedal and chain with various gears. Because receptor binding is driven by the concentration of the drug, the full agonist with a low affinity for the receptor would be acting as if things were set to the lowest gear. Now let's take a look at that scenario. So the bike gets to the end of the street, but it takes three turns of the pedal. Now let's simulate a higher affinity full agonist. Notice that the bicycle makes it to the end of the street in only one turn of the pedal, as if it were in a higher gear. This is what we see with a higher affinity full agonist. Let's now turn to what we call a partial agonist. The simplest way to think about it is that this is kind of agonist, maximal effect is less, that is partial, than that of a pure agonist. Turning to the receptor theory again, a partial agonist, while favoring R starred, does not shift the conformational equilibrium to R starred as effectively as a pure agonist. So even at maximal effect, the effect is less than the maximal effect for a full agonist. Let's now turn back to our bicycle analogy and see how a partial agonist would look. Now, partial agonists can have a higher or lower affinity, just like a full agonist, 
which would impact the number of turns of the gear, but with the partial agonist, the bicycle only reaches part of the way down the street. So why would a clinician ever want to use a drug that can only achieve part of a maximal effect? Again, going back to the opioids, let's use the example of morphine and oxymorphone, for example, that are pure or fuel full agonists. However, they're dose dependent, beneficial, and also adverse, that is life threatening effects like suppression of the respiratory center that can lead to death. These side effects and effects overlap considerably, making the administration quite dangerous. However, the partial opioid agonists like butorphanol or buprenorphine can be administered more safely because their beneficial effects level out before reaching the point where the adverse effect of respiratory depression is generally observed. In summary, the pharmacodynamic effects of drug receptor interactions are most often reversible in nature and defined by the drug concentration and the equilibrium binding constant in the initial assumption that receptor numbers are constant at a given moment in time. The most common way to express the binding relationship is the sigmoidal log dose response curve with a maximal effect or Emax and half maximal effect achieved by the EC50. A full agonist is a compound that achieves the largest biological effect at its maximal effective concentration. A partial agonist is a compound for which the Emax and therefore the intrinsic efficacy is less than that of a full agonist. So in receptor theory, when a full agonist interacts with a receptor, it shifts the equilibrium toward the activated receptor form and it has a preferential activity for the activated form relative to the resting form. A pure agonist has a greater conformational selectivity for the activated form of the receptor than a partial agonist.